With our CSS, now that we have our file attached, the way that CSS works is we look for an HTML element in our document here, and we pick it, and we do something to it design-wise. So let's say, as an example, here's my website right here. Oops, accidentally closed it. Here's my website right here. And to start, let's say I want to style the whole background. So right now, the whole background of the page is white. But maybe I want to be at something different, make it something different. So in here, I need to find an HTML element that surrounds everything in my website. So if we look here, the HTML element does surround everything. So that's probably the appropriate element to choose. But the body also could work because it does surround all of the content. So now that I know the HTML element is the one that I want, there's a lot of different ways I can get at that element and I, the ways I can target it to design it. So the first thing is just targeting by its name. So here's the tag name, HTML. So I'll go into my CSS and write HTML. I don't need to put the uh, angle brackets or anything like that, just the name of the tag. After that, I put an open and close curly brace. So everything in between here, everything in between the curly braces is going to target the HTML file or the HTML element. Now, we've targeted the HTML element here, and we've done nothing to it. So if I was to refresh in my browser, you'd see that it looks exactly the same. So we want to change the background color. Now, in CSS, there's a whole bunch of properties that you can affect on your HTML elements, and one of them is called background color. So background color, like this, make sure that you spell it the American way. If you don't, it just won't work. So now that we've chosen our we've decided to change the background color. I've typed the name of the property I want to change right here, background color. Then I've written a colon. And after the colon, I put what I want to change it to. So let's say uh, I will do lime green as my color. And then after that, I put a semicolon. At the end of every line in CSS, there should be a semicolon. So I'll go back here and refresh. And you can see now my background color has changed. So let's continue on. Let's say I wanted to style this h1 right here. So inside my CSS, I'll write h1 like this. And maybe I'll change the color to white instead. So white like that. Again, we're spelling it American-wise. And the difference here is the background color changes the color behind the box. The color changes the text inside of it. So I've changed the text color right here. So I can just keep going through and styling all the different elements on my website. Let's say I pick the P element. So I want to style P. I'm going to target P here. And let's give it a background color of yellow. I'll go and refresh. And now you can see, look, all of the P elements on my website are yellow. So I have a P element here. I have a P tag here. And I have a P tag down here. So when we're using, when we're targeting by tag in CSS, that means every tag like that will be targeted the same way. So here I've targeted all three of my p tags at the same time.